So now we come to the twin paradox, which is probably the most famous paradox in the special theory of relativity. Uh, in reality, it's a pseudo paradox, as we've mentioned before, because you can explain it very uh, logically and consistently within the confines of the special theory of relativity, but it, it just seems counterintuitive to our, our common sense and even counterintuitive to, to some of the principles of, of relativity, because one of the principles is it seems like things should be relative, right? If, if you have a symmetrical situation, then what happens to one person should happen to the other if you reverse the analysis. And so let's set it up here. You can see we've got a space-time diagram. We'll get to that in a minute. But so over here we've got, we'll have Alice traveling this time. So she's in spaceship going with velocity v. Bob is observing. And Alice heads over to this star, which is three light years from Bob in Bob's frame of reference. Her velocity is going to be 0.6 times the speed of light. And the gamma factor then is 1.25. And just from um, our previous analysis with things like time dilation, we can see that from Bob's perspective here, let's just start with Bob and figure out, okay, what's going on with Alice? Well, at a velocity of 0.6 c, as she travels away from him, that means if the star is three light years away, it will take her five years to get there. Five years times 0.6 uh, times the speed of light gives us um, the three, three light years, or really the other way around, you could, you could say it, that uh, three light years times, um, well, let me say five times 0.6 gives us three. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, so what happens here is this is her world line, Alice's world line, going up to five years and traveling three light years there. And so that's the speed of 0.6 times the speed of light. And then she turns around at that point and comes back again. All right, so another five years, according to Bob's clocks, so another five years, and then she's back at uh, 10 years in terms of what he is, is thinking. And uh, then let's think about what he sees Alice's clocks do. Well, Alice's clocks will be time dilated. They will be running slowly as he observes them according to his lattice of clocks. Remember, both Alice and Bob have their imaginary lattice of clocks all synchronized. And so we, we know that, um, we'll just call it, uh, you know, Alice's clocks, T sub A, we'll call it delta T sub A, a certain period of time in Alice's clocks is going to be 1 over gamma delta T sub B because, you know, Bob is observing Alice Alice moving. And so if you do the math, which really isn't too difficult here, because if Bob says it sees five years for Alice to get out there, well, five years divided by 1.25. So this is going to be 1 over 1.25 times Bob measures five years in his frame of reference for Alice to get there, and you get four years. So he sees Alice's clocks tick off four years. When she gets there, they take a picture. Okay, so his lattice of clocks will read five years. Her clock at that point will read four years. Uh, and then on the return trip, same thing happens that now she's coming back, but still at a velocity of 0.6c. Bob will see his clocks tick off five years again, because that's how long at 0.6c it takes to go three light years back again. And at the same time, he will see Alice's clocks run more slowly than his, and so he'll see Alice's clock run for four years. So we'll have essentially four years for Alice here, another four years here. Meanwhile, Bob has five years and five years. So from Bob's perspective, it seems like Alice should come back having aged eight years. Well, he has aged 10 years. Uh, and you can say that's somewhat paradoxical, but not within the confines of the, of the theory of relativity, the special theory here, uh, because we know about time dilation. Where the paradox comes in, as we'll see in a minute, is Alice's understanding of this. In fact, let's, let's think about that right now, because you could say, well, let's just reverse the situation, because in Alice's frame of reference, she sees Bob moving away from her, right? And we could draw similar diagram like this for Alice, except Bob would, would travel over here this way in negative direction and then travel back to, to meet Alice again, as it were. So whether Bob is on Earth or planet or just his own spaceship there, Alice travels away to the star, comes back again, okay? Or Alice could see Bob from her frame of reference, Bob travels that way, you know, goes that way, the star comes to her, 
and then back again. The star moves away, and Bob comes this way. And if you do that analysis from Alice's perspective, she sees her clock ticks off four years. And then you could say, okay, from so this is Bob's analysis. And then if we do Alice's analysis, she'll say, well, from my perspective, your clocks, Bob, are ticking more slowly than mine. My clock's ticked off four years. We both agree on that because that's what my clock read when I got there. But I see your clocks ticking more slowly during my trip out there. If I do comparisons along the way, I see them actually doing 1 over gamma delta Ta. And so if you do that, actually, <clears throat> if you do delta Ta equals 4, so this is 1 over 1.25, and this is 4, you get 3.2. That's it, something like that. 4 divided, yeah. Okay, 3.2 years. So she sees his clocks tick off 3.2 years there. And so this is where the real paradox comes in. I mean, part of the paradox is just in the idea of time dilation and all that, that there might be a difference in times when they get back. But the real paradox is Bob can understand just from regular time dilation when Alice comes back that his clocks, uh, her clocks run more slowly. Yet Alice, though, can do the same analysis and say, well, if, it took, if I observe Bob's clocks going 3.2 years out and 3.2 years back, shouldn't that be 6.4 years total? My clocks run 8 years, while Bob's clocks run 6.4 years. I should expect Bob to be younger when I get back. So what's going on here? They, you, know, you can't have both. Either one is older and one is younger or they're the same age. And so we have to figure out what's going on with this in terms of the special theory of relativity. Can we explain this? so that we can understand that when they get back, Alice actually, the answer is, Alice has aged eight years and Bob has aged 10 years, and yet this part of the analysis also for Alice is correct. Now, one other thing to mention here, because often when you, you read about the twin paradox uh, and just sometimes even, even think about it a little bit, you'll often come to the point that, well, there's a real problem here because for Alice to get to the star, she has to change direction. And to change direction means she has to decelerate to zero and then accelerate again or sort of go in a loop. So however she does it, she's accelerating. And as we mentioned before, the special theory of relativity only works for inertial frames of reference when you have constant velocity motion. And so it seems that that just throws the whole thing out the window, that we cannot analyze this situation using the special theory of relativity. Uh, and sometimes you'll hear it said that way. The twin paradox, because it involves acceleration, therefore uh, you have to use something like the general theory of relativity, which involves acceleration, to, to really understand it. In actual fact, you don't. The, the difference in times, as we'll see when they get back, is due to relativistic effects from the special theory of relativity. And here's how we can handle the acceleration. Essentially, we'll make the acceleration uh, the time of acceleration, deceleration, and acceleration, again, very, very small compared to the travel time. Okay? So in other words, essentially be not quite an instantaneous turnaround there, but decelerate rapidly and then accelerate rapidly and turn around and, and come back again. Um, and you can make that possible if it's not possible within our numbers here, you just lengthen the trip that, that needs to be made. And then you can make the time of acceleration really as small as you want. Now, of course, there, there are things about, you have to uh, factor in uh, at what level can a human body um, you know, take a certain amount of deceleration and acceleration. In fact, next week we'll talk a little bit more about that. But we'll just assume for now, yes, we can decelerate and accelerate rapidly enough so that the time of acceleration is negligible compared to the time when, it's at constant, when Alice is at constant velocity there. But as we'll see, the key point about that deceleration and acceleration, and actually, as you can see from the diagram here as well, is that Alice changes her frame of reference. And that's what we have to take into account. And as long as we take that into account, then we can analyze this from the, uh, the perspective of the special theory of relativity and understand that, yes, Alice does, we'll see Bob's clocks when she's traveling along here. On the outbound trip, she will observe Bob's clocks ticking away and a total time of 3.2 years, while hers do four years. Meanwhile, Bob sees his clocks five years and hers at four years, 
uh, on the inbound trip as well. She'll see Bob's clocks 3.2 years, while hers do four years, and Bob will observe his clocks for, for five years. So that's what we want to understand. And what we're going to do in part two here of the twin paradox is break this diagram down, expand it out to the, uh, the, in, uh, the outbound trip and the inbound trip, and do a combined, two combined space-time diagrams, actually, to see if we can uh, understand a little bit more diagrammatically, visually, what's going on with, uh, with the twin paradox.